With a history getting close to 30 years, the Pokemon TCG has had some amazing times and memories. But unfortunately, it's had some very, very bad cards that the player base has downright hated. From mistranslations, which could have been fueled with a conspiracy theory by the way, all the way to the most hated deck in Pokemon history that forced the Pokemon Company International to step in, we'll be looking at some of the most degenerative cards in Pokemon TCG history. Now I can't lie, I'm a big fan of Marshadow, it's a very cool and unique Pokemon. But this Marshadow card was responsible for single handedly killing the format, resulting in many games being decided as early as turn 1. You see, this was back in the day where you could play a supporter on your first turn going first. This saw Lily become an absolute format staple. This would normally let you draw till you have 6 cards in your hand. However, if it was your first turn, you could draw till you have 8 instead. This would lead to explosive turn ones where you would aim to get your Pokemon into play as soon as possible. However, what this little Marshadow would do is very upsetting. You see, Marshadow had the let loose ability that when bench would force both players to shuffle their hand into their deck and draw four cards. So it was basically judge on a coming into play ability. And for the most part, if you ever have a supporter on an ability, you kind of have to take it seriously. And that's what the player base did because very fast people clocked on that if you were going first, you could play your Lily, get set up, and then at right the end of the turn, you could fire off a let loose Marshadow to not only extend your reach this turn, and to help set up for next turn, but essentially make your opponent start the game with a 4 card hand instead of 7. This meant your opponent immediately had much less options to start the game, and really reducing the chances of them having explosive Lily like you did. Making your opponent sometimes settle for sub-optimal supporters like Cynthia for example. Putting them immediately on the back foot. And it was this downright dirty Marshadow reducing hand size as early as turn 1 that decided so many games. It was so common and prevalent that the term I got let loose or Marshadowed out the game became common talk of the format for people describing how they lost the game. Do you know how bad a card has to be for it to become a verb? Oh my goodness. And you know what? It happened to me too. Since all the way back then, I was a Malamar player. Malamar relied on you getting two or three Malamar out as soon as possible to fuel your attackers like Giratina, Ultra Necrozma or Trevenant Dust Noir. With its ability Psychic Recharge, you could attach one Psychic Energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. The problem was, if you got let loose, it was very unlikely you would get a good amount of ink down early enough for you to realistically get into the game. A very, very scary card that looked very cute and get it twisted, but caused a ton of havoc on the Pokemon TCG. Now Phantom Forces in my opinion should be in contention for being one of the best sets of all time. With some killer format staples like VS Seeker, which at the time every deck played, because it let you put a supporter from your discard pile back into your hand ready for immediate use. Keep VS Seeker in mind, we will be revisiting it later. We also saw a ton of format essentials in this set like Zerosic, as well as the birth of some real strong archetypes like Mega Manetric EX with its Turbo Bolt and Night March. There was however one downright silly card in Phantom Forces that completely eliminated a whole win condition from the game and while in the process of doing so created, in my opinion, the most hated deck in Pokemon history. Well, what was that card? Lissandre's Trump card. This card was meant to show Lissandre in the part of the X and Y games where he goes full crazy with his robotic arms and he sets his planet motion to fire AZ's laser. Do some very naughty things. So how did Creature manage to harness the climax of the X and Y games into a card form then? Could be quite difficult, right? Well, to be fair, I, th I think they did a pretty good job, all things considered, because this card is bonkers. Because what Lissandre's Trump card did was make both players shuffle their whole discard piles back into their deck. Yep, that is right. So completely eliminating the deck out strategy from the game, because if you ever got near the point of decking out, where you had little cards in your deck, you could just fire off old crazy Lissandre and you'd be straight back in the race. So how did this silly card result in the most hated deck in Pokemon history then? A deck so bad it actually forced TPCI to hop in and do something they haven't done in close to 15 years. Well, it didn't take the player base long to take Lissandre's trump card and go wild. They quickly worked out if you could turbo through your deck in one turn, you could play a ton of high power disruption cards like Crushing Hammer to remove energy on a coin flip, 
Of course, that coin flip wouldn't matter because, well, you'd be playing all four of them in one turn. You could use Team Flare Grunt to reliably remove energy and find Headringers to make it even harder for your opponent to attack by increasing their attack costs. You could pretty much fully lock your opponent down, right? And then once you've turboed through all those cards and your opponent can't do anything, you can just play Lissandre's Trump card, often with a VS Seeker, so you could do it over and over and over again. So, what kind of turbo cards allowed this strategy to work? Well, Aquabyte let you look at the top two cards and take one, Trainer's Meld let you take a trainer card from the top four cards of your deck, and Chain Mini X let you draw to have six cards in your hand. This deck even played a thick line of Swirlix of all things, which had the tasting ability, which let you draw one card once per turn, or two cards if it was in the active. And bear in mind this stack, so if you had four of these out, you could draw an extra four cards a turn. But the problem really wasn't all the turbo cards allowing you to draw your whole deck, because normally if you were to do that, you would just deck out pretty fast. The problem wasn't even the disruptive cards, because normally you couldn't spam them all in one turn. The real problem was the Sando's Trump card effectively removing the balancing factor from both style of cards at the same time making for a deadly combination that would immediately lock your opponent from doing anything, then spamming Kraken and Punch from Seismitoad so you couldn't even play any item cards next turn, fully preventing any form of comeback. And it was this deck right here, Seismitoad tasting, that forced TPCI to do something, and Lissandre's trump card got banned, saving the format. But at the time it was legal, the player base was absolutely distraught. I even refer to those times as the Dark Ages, because the Pokemon TCG was very, very dark. Yep, yeah, another trainer card that left the player base absolutely distraught, and TPCI was forced to step in once again. Pokemon Catcher. Yeah, actually, you heard me right, Pokemon Catcher. That card pretty much collects dust in everyone's bolt box, right? So how was it this lowly little uncommon ruled the format, making players rip their hair out? How does this happen? How did a card go from so hated to worthless, pretty much almost instantly? Well, let me explain. You see, Pokemon Catcher used to read, swap one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. Yep, that's right. So it was pretty much boss's orders on an item card. Can you now see why it was hated so much? The ability to swap your opponent's active is a very powerful effect in the Pokemon TCG and to have it on a single item card is downright dirty. So if you really think about it, the ability to swap your opponent's active in the modern era has always been tied to supporters like Lissandre, Guzma and Boss's orders. If it has been on an item card, it's normally been restricted in some way. Think of Great Catcher only being able to gust stop GXs, or Custom Catcher forcing you to play two at the same time, or Counter Catcher forcing you to be behind on prizes, or cross switcher forced you to play two again. But back in the day, Pokemon Catcher had it on an item. And bear in mind, this existed at the same time as Skylar, which was pretty much a four off in every deck. Skylar let you search out your deck for any trainer card and put it in your hand. So that pretty much meant Skylar, at any point in the game, was a constant boss's order threat as well. Having this power on an item card let aggro decks focused around Landorus EX's hammerhead attack which did 30 to the active and 30 to the bench, or Mewtwo EX had the export attack which did 20 for each energy attached to both active Pokemon, literally rule the game and wreak havoc on any kind of evolution deck. This sort of big basic grinching got so bad TP Shire had to step in again and this time they errated Pokemon Catcher saying that any iterations of the card that were played now had to require a coin flip to be successful and all future cards were printed to reflect the new text of this card. A nice end to the story, but the next card that we're about to look at was literally so broken by a mistake by the game designers of all people, and they decided to actively do nothing about it for a good two years almost, potentially to sabotage their game on purpose. Slowking was released in the Neo Genesis expansion all the way back in December 2000, and to be honest, it was pretty lackluster. Its attack was pretty below average for the time, doing an absolutely maximum of 40 damage for free energy. Wow, times have changed, eh? Its Pokemon Power Mind Games was mildly interesting though. If it was in the active spot, it forced your opponent's trainers that they played to be subject to a coin flip to be successful. If that coin flip was heads, that trainer would do nothing and it would go to the top of their deck instead of their discard pile. This could have devastating consequences, all things considered, if you kept flipping heads on these mind game flips. Since not only was pretty much every card worth playing a trainer back then, including Bill, let you draw two, the 
Professor Oak, discard your hand, draw seven, and the computer search will let you discard two cards from your hand and get any card from your deck. Because remember back then, there was no supporters. Everything was under the straight trainer classification. So if it wasn't Pokemon or energy, it was a trainer. And Slowking would help disrupt all of them. But since those trainers would also go to the top of your deck instead of the discard pile, you knew you were guaranteed to not be able to progress your board state because you knew that card you was about to top deck at the start of your next turn was going to be a trainer. And you also had a 50% chance of it doing nothing. This could sometimes grind your opponent to a halt, all things considered, if they were very unlucky. But 50% of the time their trainers would work and you were forced to attack with a slow king as well for mind games to work. Because it had to be in the active and its attack was, you know, pretty dreadful. Except everything I just said, I just lied to you. Yep, you see, when Slowking was translated into English by Wizards of the Coast, they actually forgot to put the part in the ability that said if Slowking was in the active spot. Bit of a mistranslation. This meant you could do the absolutely unthinkable and have four Slowking on the bench with any attacker of your choice in the active, forcing your opponent to flip four tails in a row to play any trainer card. The format delved into just who could develop Slow King the fastest since there was almost no downside to playing it but the massive upside of completely stopping your opponent from doing anything. So then why was an error like this fixed almost immediately though? Especially if the format became complete Slow King fests. Well what I'm about to tell you is pure rumours and speculation and has never been confirmed by any source but the rumour was since the Pokemon TCG was run and managed by Wizards of the Coast at the time they saw what happened to the format and actively decided to wait almost two years before stepping in and doing anything, all in an effort to encourage people to play their game instead, Magic the Gathering. Who knows if that's actually true? I would really like to think it's not. Even if it was done on purpose or not, it didn't take long for Pokemon to step in and start to run the trading card game circuit themselves. And they've been doing a much better job, so happy days. But that's the end of this video and if you liked it why don't you check out this video here where we go through the most unbelievable things to be caught on a Pokemon TCG 